You know, my dear internet creatures, there's a few things on this planet that I think we can all agree on. The sky is blue, puppies are cute, taxation is basically theft, and the Mio Mini Plus had perfect custom firmware. In fact, I would argue that this gave it an edge over any other device, because this is a comparatively and objectively weak device. The CPU on this thing was actually used for Wi-Fi routers and repurposed for this handheld. I just learned this on Reddit. If it's not true, then somebody lied to me, so don't come after my head. And there's way better hardware out there than the Mio Mini. Like this guy. You know what this is, this is the Anbernic RG35XXH, used to be plagued by the same annoying drawback, and that is its software. Well, not anymore, because now we have the first actually stable custom firmware that I can personally respect. Gaze your eyes upon MuOS, which is short for Mustard OS, don't ask me why, <laughs> maybe the creators of this specific firmware really love Mustard. But this is one of the fastest custom firmwares out there, and I dare say that it's feature complete. They have the first public stable release that was only published a few days ago. In fact, I'm gonna show how fast it boots on camera. So, the boot up started with this LED, right? Pum -pum -pum -pum. And that's it. This right here is what I missed in Onion OS when traveling to all kinds of other devices. That fast boot up and the fact that it overall feels blazingly fast. And I know we have other custom firmwares for the RG35XXH now. We have things like Batocera, a community modification of the official ROM released by Ambernick, and we have MuOS. And... But as you can imagine, MuOS also comes with some drawbacks, meaning that it's very arch-like. You won't find transitions. In fact, I'd argue that it's as basic as you can get. It's basically a list of your ROMs, and that's basically it. You click, you play, you move on with your life, you put this in your pocket, and that's basically it. Mastered OS or MuOS basically tries to stay out of the way when you navigate between you and your ROMs. And it really depends which kind of person you are. You might love this, or you might love having multiple cover art images for each and every one of your ROMs. You might love flashy transitions and smooth animations. For that you have Batocera, I'm probably gonna make a video on that as well somewhere in the future, but this is for people that don't want to be distracted by unnecessary, quite frankly, optional things. And my worry with MuOS was that I couldn't play higher-end systems. The thing with MuOS, from what I can tell, is that it only relies on RetroArch cores. I talked with some of the developers on Discord and they say that they might include standalone emulators, but currently, as far as I can tell, you only get to play with RetroArch cores. And this really isn't as limiting as you might think. Here's the Dreamcast version of Legacy of Kane Soul River running quite nicely. I didn't even check the settings. It's crisp as all hell, maybe my camera doesn't do it justice. And here's the PSP version of Dragon Ball Z running at 2x resolution with no frame skip at all from the PPSSPP RetroArch Core. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to instill the delusion that all PSP games will run at 2x on this thing. Not even in the slightest, you better not hope for God of War or other games like that. But my point is that you don't have to give up on the more advanced systems just to run this custom firmware. Honestly, I can say that I like this custom firmware a lot. I don't know if I should call it MuOS or Mastered OS, and installing it is super easy. Basically, you download the image file that I'll put in the description, you download Rufus, you install that image through Rufus on your SD card, and then you plop your card into your Ambernick RG35XXH, and bam, you have a new fancy firmware. Unfortunately for us all, this is not in any way similar to Onion OS, which is the gold standard of custom firmwares. I said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. Without Onion OS, the Mio Mini and Mio Mini Plus would have been mediocre handhelds at best. The firmware, the software inside of these things are the things that elevate them, nothing else. But yeah. I wanted to bring this to your attention, this is, as far as I know, the first stable custom firmware that we have out there. 
Patosera is still in beta, from what I know, even though they released a new version a few days ago, we don't have Batocera Lite for this anymore, we actually have a good version of Batocera 4.0 now, but it still suffers from annoying bugs like very long boot times, and honestly, that alone puts me off from using any sort of firmware. If I have to wait for more than a minute, then it's not for me. I want to be in it in an instant, play my games, and and go on living my very small existential droplet of self-awareness until entropy finally takes me away. So are you interested in putting custom firmware on your Anbernic RG35XXH? Personally, I think you should. The original firmware is pretty mediocre at best. It can get the job done, but if you compare it to Onion OS, it's humiliating. In any case, it's been a pleasure ranting to you yet again, and I'll miss you. I'll really miss you. I'll try to publish a clip every day from now on. If you want to support this channel, feel free to become a member. Super nerds end up on this wall of fame, which will be present in each and every clip. In the meantime, I love you all, my sweet geeks. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not, but you get some extra love points if you subscribe. And I want us to grow this thing so big that companies will eventually send me devices without me having to burn through my money. <laughs> So much honesty? Nah, I love you guys. I can share things with you. See you next time.